All right, everyone. Welcome back to a, another episode of Golf Unfiltered. Um, my name is Nikki. That's Adam. And we have a very special guest with us today. Um, back again, if you listen to the memoirs from Magnolia Lane episode, um, we have with us Wells Adams. How are you today? Thank you for being here with us today. Yeah, I'm surprised that you guys wanted me back so soon. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> Anytime I get to talk about golf is uh, is a good day. So yeah, thanks for having me. Um, and I really love doing the memoirs from Magnolia. That was that was really cool. Yeah, um, I think last time. So last time we talked to you, you were gonna go out and play um, the. Uh, I'm gonna butcher this the full title, but the Celebrity Classic at yeah. Las Colinas. Um, yeah. How was that? I played so badly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the weather was pretty bad though, too, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got rained out one day. Um, it, yeah, it just it wasn't ideal. The course was it actually drained really well and was in great shape. Um, it was kind of nice that we got rained out one day because then there wasn't a cut. Which is this is the first time that of these pro ams that I've done where there's a cut. And once you do that, you're like, oh, I. I don't want to miss the cut. Like, you know, you fly out there you <laughs> yeah. those, you know, and you're like, Oh no. I, so every, even like Marty fish who like is like always, uh, you know, wins those things. He was like, I don't like this cut idea, you know, mm -hmm. like <laughs> uh, this added stress. So it being rained out one day was great because there wasn't a cut. So everyone made the cut, which was great. But I played like comically bad. Um, it's so funny too. Like I've been playing since I was a kid and I don't, I've taken lessons every once in a while and, uh, I don't feel like it ever helps. Like when, when then I, I've got way too many swing thoughts, you know, there's too um, much going and, on up there. Yeah. 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 And so, and my, my big miss is, is, is a big snap hook, like mm -hmm. just a Same. push hook. Um, and so I've tried like everything, like really making sure I get, get the club outside, really trying to turn my club. So like, I feel like I'm coming in and just slicing it. And I went out there and I played terribly. I was snap hooking everything. I couldn't like find a fair way to like save my life. It was honestly like one of the worst. It was it was so bad where I was like, I don't know why I'm doing this to myself. Like one, I might hurt somebody. And two, like <laughs> this isn't fun for me anymore. And I finally went to like golf YouTube, which is <laughs> I feel like I feel place. like I You're feel one like of us. <laughs> yeah, I feel like golf YouTube is not dissimilar from going to WebMD, like thinking that you can diagnose yourself and it's like, oh, I have golf cancer. That's yep, you have great. a brain tumor now. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but I did. I went to it and I I'm so frustrated because like the, the, the pro at my club, all those people I play with who are so good. No one suggested to me, hey, man, your right hand is your grip is so strong. Why don't you just make it super weak? Mm -hmm. And so like right after this tournament, that's all I did. No more like tr trying to augment my club at the, t at the, at the top. It was literally just make my right hand super weak. S spend like four days getting used to that feel. And my ball is going dead straight. <laughs> like it's the best I've ever played and it's so frustrating that it, i figured it out right after the tournament so. okay but that's pretty good though because you just went to play pinehurst which we're going to talk about and yeah. band and dunes for your birthday which happy belated birthday by the way Thank yeah, you so, much. so i mean that you, you've got to feel pretty good that you worked it out i mean it doesn't feel good that you didn't work it out for a tournament where you get money but it does feel good to work it out for those really nice courses that you get to play though so yeah, uh, I I didn't. I was like figuring it out at at Pinehurst. Actually, I mm -hmm. had it figured out at Band Dunes, which was sick. But anyways, how fucking lucky am I? I <laughs> I <laughs> right. Let's yeah, do really. that's too pretty. That's let's pretty amazing just courses back to back. Like, let's just rub it into everyone out there <laughs> that their lives are not as good as mine. I got to go play <laughs> Pinehurst number two, and then fly up to Bend, Oregon, to play four of the five courses at Bandon. Like you played honestly, all, you played all four. No, I, I I played everyone. Everyone except for Old McDonald. Oh wow. So wow. we did um we did Bandon Dunes first, then we played 
um, Trails, and then we did Pacific, and then we did Sheep's Ranch, and we did 36 a day. So we were just there for two days. But um, yeah, anyways, I can tell you all about both the courses, <laughs> like or all the courses so, that I play. But I'm lucky. I've never I've never had the privilege of going to Bandon yet, but I've heard the trip from the airport to the actual property is a thing. Is that pretty lengthy? Uh, it wasn't bad. No, I don't think so. Um, okay. It, to be honest with you, I heard a lot of that. Like, you know, I, I know uh, like a lot of like famous people at, at my club, like take a private jet there. Like we, like we didn't do that. Um, cause everyone's always like, that's oh, such a pain in the ass to get there. I found that that was not true at all. Uh, it, it, I live in LA, so it might be more difficult for you guys. I think you guys are, mm -hmm uh not in yeah. yeah you guys are east coasters so um but like it was super easy it's like it's like a two-hour flight to san francisco it's like another hour it's not that's like a yeah it's like a two-hour flight to san francisco i made an hour and a half to bend you get there you get your rental car um and then it's maybe like a 45 minute drive over to oh, okay. abandoned dune it wasn't bad and we stayed actually in old bandon for the first mm -hmm. night which was really cool like getting to see the old town and like we went out at the bar and stuff and I would actually like almost suggest that over staying at Bandon Dunes because there's nothing to do at Bandon Dunes. Like that was my next question. Like, what do yeah. you do? Is there nightlife? Yeah. Uh, no, not really. And it's, a, I, I want to preface this by saying like, it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life in terms of golf. Um, so like take this with a grain of salt, but like there are a few things that they could do better. And one would be like, dude, have a fun bar. Like, <laughs> I mean, there is Maybe there is restaurant like something. Yeah, and like there, there was a couple of restaurants, and there's always a wait. And you're like, what do you? Just, let's get let's get another bar here. Um, mm -hmm. And like, there's a there's a like a cigar room, which is fun, but like they're like you can't gamble, and you're like, what do you mean I can't? Like, so they give you chips so you can like. It doesn't it's not obvious. It's not obvious that you're gambling, but everyone's gambling. Like we were playing dice the entire time. So that was my, that would be my own, my only suggestion is like they just need to like ramp that up because everything else is just like first class. But uh, it's funny because I, I I did Piners first and then we did Bandon and I and I would say that they are the same thing. Like it is a mm -hmm. destination golf experience, and they're both run really really well. Um, and I and I have to say that I love them both, but Pinehurst has it figured out like a little bit better. Like we can take like let's say the golf aside, Pinehurst to me reminded me so much of Disneyland. Like everything mm. ran really, really streamlined, smooth. It was really, really beautiful. Like the hotel I stayed in was was amazing. The shuttles run really great. And the one thing that Pinehurst has over Bandon is they have this little village there uh that you can walk you can take the the, tra the shuttle but i just walked everything's like within you know maybe a, a half a mile so after i after i did like a, we did like this thing at the cradle which is their part three course i walked over to the village and they have like four or five little pubs and i just hmm. got blackout drunk and just <laughs> talked golf with like everybody one's called like the the quill and done or something like that. It's like a homage to like some old writer there, a journal golf journalist. Um, and so they had that, they had that. And it was like one of those places where I was like, this would be a good place. I could, I couldn't take my wife to Bandon dunes, but I could take my wife to Pinehurst and she would be like, this is great. I will, I'll go to the spa. I'll go shopping. We, you know, we have dinner in the village. Um, whereas at Bandon, it's like, it's just golf, but the golf mm -hmm. is, insane hmm. well i i definitely want to you know one of the reasons why we're talking about pinehurst is we're we're by the time this comes out previewing the the u.s open yeah um and which you know they've had what i think the last time it was there was 20 2014 so 10 years ago yeah, yeah. um and so pinehurst will be will have hosted the u.s open i think the most times now um so more than any other course, I think is, is what the record is now, potentially. I'm trying to look this up. Um, yep, I think you're right. But so with that being said, it, is that, I mean, I would guess that's probably one of the reasons why they're having, like, they're a little more efficient with their, like, they have like a village and their shuttle system and all the above compared to a place like 
Bandon being a little more difficult to get to. Yeah, it's also older too, right? Like it was at the turn of the centuries when, you know, it was like a resort for like sick people, I believe. Um, uh, And then they started like playing golf there and then, you know, built the nine. The first nine was one and then they built, uh, Donald Ross did like the second nine, that was two. So yeah, they've had more time to to build it out for sure. Mm -hmm. It's also, yeah, it's more accessible than banded dudes banded it's you're just in the middle of nowhere yeah um but well, yeah, some would argue uh, that north carolina is in the middle of nowhere so. fair <laughs> enough fair enough uh that actually that drive is worse than bandon because I, I flew is into really? raleigh yeah i flew into raleigh and it's like a two-hour drive over there but the thing is is that like if i had to, i went to pinehurst purely it was like a it's like a was a promotional thing for the u.s open right like they invited a bunch of like golf people to c- go there um, but if I were to do it all over again, I'd rent a car and I would, I would do Pinehurst. I try to play as many as I could. And then tobacco roads right there. So you can go play a bunch of other courses as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's funny cause like they kept on being like, this is the cradle of golf. This is the, this is the, this is the, you know, this is where it started. And I'm like, no, it's not, but mm-hmm. okay. You know, like, <laughs> And I'm like, the, Pebble, Pebble Beach is the cradle of golf in America for me, or like the country club up in Boston. But um, but then like when you go there and you're like, oh, there's like a zillion courses here. I totally get why this is the c- cradle of golf. Yeah. I, I mean, not to discredit, there is history there. I mean, you know, yeah. you've got um, Payne Stewart and, you know, you've got, um, which I think they just moved um, – some of the renovations they were doing, they just moved the statue that they made of him up to yeah. like the front gate, which I'm, I'm sure you, you probably saw that um, when you were there. Um, but as far as the, the course and okay. what we're going to see at the tournament this, well, this weekend, I guess um, they're saying it's set up for 7,550 yards yeah. Did it did it feel like that? Like that to me, those numbers are <laughs> you like playing from that's the tips what, there, Wells. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Were you were you playing from the tips? Like was it, it it's funny because it was like all of the golf influencers that like I follow and stuff were there, right? Like uh Saint Andre and mm-hmm. you know Frankie mm-hmm. from Barstool and everything. And uh and I was like, I haven't I don't know why I was invited to this. Like <laughs> I, I maybe like get like the female demographic at the US Open or something. But uh, we didn't know we were we were who we were paired with. So a couple of the guys were like, we're going to pl- and, and this. It's so crazy. It's it's so fun. But like all these golf YouTubers, like they have drones, they have camera. P- like it's like a whole production where I'm like, selfie. <laughs> I'm at Finer. <laughs> <Purdue."> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, so a couple of the guys were like, we're going to play our whole thing today is we're going to play Pinehurst two from the tips and like see what we shoot. And and they were like, what we think we'll, sh- what we'll score here and everything. Um, and so I was like, I'll do that with you guys. Let's go. I'm not wor- working on a whole new grip right now. And like uh, worried about <laughs> snap looking anything. Let's do it. But then when we got there, we were specifically paired. So then I was with, uh, with Frankie from Barstool. And I was like, I, I'm a big fan of, Frankie and Barstool and all that stuff. So I was like, I kind of, I think I want to play with him. And then also I don't want to play the tips. So long winded <laughs> thing of, we did not play from the tips. We played like a couple up. We played it. I think we played it right under seven, which I feel like I'm a, I'm a four handicap. Anything over seven is not fun for me. Like I don't, no. I don't understand that. So I think we played it kind of about right where we should have, you know? Yeah. Anything yeah. over 68 i think so i'm a six and it's like i don't want to hit four iron into a bowl shaped green and not you know know where it's going to end up and then have to climb through the the waste areas i think they call it around pine yeah and hope that i could find my golf ball i mean it's it sounds a lot more difficult than i want to experience i guess but how did how did it feel getting in First of all, were you in those situations on the golf course? And how did it feel kind of getting out of it? Before before I start talking about the golf course, number two, I do want to mention the cradle. 
because I thought that that was very, very cool. And it's like it's now becoming a thing, right? Like a hallmark of a really good golf institution is a par three course, right? Like Augusta's right. got it. Yep. Pebbles got they they just Tiger just redid the hay. Bandon has two of them, uh, which we can talk about that later if you want. Um Macklemore up in North Georgia, they have a little yeah. like, six hole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, Pinehurst built this this thing called the Cradle, and it is so freaking cool. We went out there the first night, and one of the golf influencers bought like, brought like old like hickory sticks and o- old clubs, and so we played it with old uh, stuff. It was so cool. There's a bar right there. We were like getting drinks, uh, smoking cigars. Everyone barefoot, um, mm-hmm. and it's it, it's just one of those things of like a little par three course is so dope to have like and so right off the bat like i was like i love this place this is amazing i'm, I'm half drunk i'm barefoot you know i'm like three cigars in i've lost a hundred bucks to you know a bunch of golf influencers and I'm having the best time of my life do not um, let my husband hear you say that because he's gonna want to build one yeah. in our backyard yeah like, yeah yeah don't, don't let jonathan listen yeah <laughs> yeah uh so anyways if you go to pinehurst highly recommend playing the cradle so very cool um when it comes to the course, like it's beautiful, by the way, like the getting there, the the facilities, like everything is like really, really top notch. I mean, last time I was on your guys' show, we were talking about Augusta and I've never played Augusta, but I've been to the Masters. It, it, it's the only th- it's the closest thing I think that I've been to maybe LACC uh, it is similar of like, whoa, this is beautiful. Like everything is immaculate but it's a little more disneylandy because it is a resort course so uh it's not as like old traditional private club e mm-hmm. but it is gorgeous now uh the course i loved it um it's so interesting too because we didn't play it at 7500 but i can see it playing from that far back you aren't going to be in a lot of trouble no i didn't think uh, the the driving, even though my big miss is a hook, the fairways are very wide, very similar, not dissimilar to Augusta. Like mm-hmm. you can kind of spray it all, all around and you're, you're probably going to be in the fairway. Um, and what's weird is that all this waste area that they've got, there's no rough there. Right. So it's all this right. like sand and then fescue or bushes or stuff or something. So it's interesting. Mm-hmm. So you can miss the fairway. And you can have a really good lie on that sand. Like it's padded down, you know, it's like, it's almost like hitting off of dirt, you know, and you're like, oh, it's just like a really tight lie and I can, I can do this. So you can get a really good break in there, but then you can also get in one of those tufts and then you're effed. Like you can't, right. then you're just like, yeah. one, you might not find it. There, there was a mm-hmm. couple of times we just lost balls in these little tufts. Um, and then if you do find it, trying to get it out is impossible. So that's going to be an interesting thing for these guys at the US Open to deal with um, because it is going to be playing so far back. They are going to be having to bomb it. And when they do, when they do bomb it, where the fairways start to come in a little bit, uh, getting stuck in, in this kind of like waste area is going to be all about luck. I think. Now the Uh, greens are, are, I guess, I don't know that Pinehurst coined the term turtle backs for these greens, but like, they're known for the the turtleback greens. Like what, I mean, what was that challenge like? And yeah, I mean, how was that speed? Yeah. I mean, like they didn't have it stamped at like 15 for us. So like, I can't, <laughs> I can't speak to like, you know, what it's going to be. I'm sure they're going to make it ridiculous. And you can yeah. tell like they have, you can very easily dry these greens out, you know, like I, mm-hmm. I think that, uh, you know, the, the agronomy staff over there is it can like modulate these greens very, very easily. Now for us, I think they were, they were fast. Don't get me wrong, but it was like 11 fast to me, mm-hmm. you okay. know? Um, and they, they didn't, the other thing is, is yes, the greens are all turtle back because I guess that's a drainage thing that Donald Ross was trying to figure out, which is super smart, which is something that I wish, uh, um, Bandon did because there was a lot of low mm-hmm. levels on those greens where they 
really, really killed the greens. Anyways, well, considering the amount of rain that that place gets, sometimes. but that's the problem. It's it, it, yeah. all the rain uh, would, would pool, and then the greens were effed there. Mm. But we can talk about that later. Later, <laughs> all these greens are like, yes, they are turtleback. What what I found interesting was, and they didn't do it to us. Like they didn't shave around the greens. Re, like re, like I think for the, the U.S. Open, it's going to be like almost the green just goes into the fairway. Like the, right. the ball, mm. the, if your ball spins off, it's just going to roll all the way down. Whereas ours would kind of stop on the, on the collar. Right. But you could see how they, they're going to do that. And they even explained to us, they're like, this is what we're going to do. And then like, also like the diabolical stuff that they were going to do, which is like, yeah, we're going to mow. Uh, we're going to mow. So everyone's chips are into grain. Like we're going to screw them <laughs> over. And it was just like, Oh my God, <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> but yeah, there was a, there was a lot of shots that I would hit like good shots. Uh, and Frankie too, actually Frankie played great. I got to give him props. Uh, we were playing, we were uh, threesome. Um, and, uh, and we were playing nine. I don't know if you know the game. Mm -hmm. nine no, uh, it's a point system situation. Oh, okay. So like if like a if scotch I, game, so if we all par it, then it's three points for each. And right. then if I okay. par and you bogey and you bogey, then uh, I get five points and you both get two points. If I win the hole by two over everybody, I get nine points. Anyways, okay. I was beating Frankie on the front and then he freak. I I had a nine on the first hole. I birdied the first hole. We started on eight, which is playing as a par five for us. But on the tournament, it'll be a par four. Uh and then he flipped me, the motherfucker, <laughs> and he beat me. Like it was really frustrating. Um, but we found that we we're having a lot of these issues where, like, we would hit greens, like we were like GIR, this is good, and then they would spin off, and you're like, what the f? Yeah. And so we were doing a lot of that, and I, and I started to notice too. I'm a really handsy, good short game guy, and normally I can like open up the up the face and like really play bounce and like uh get up and down really really easily and it wasn't as bad as it's going to be for the US Open and everything was catching and so then we started doing that thing of like should we try a rescue here from right off the green and see if you can <laughs> pop it up there or like at, we were doing a lot of it, our caddies were like you should putt this and it was like you know a 20 yard uphill right. from the fringe yeah. putt <laughs> yeah uh now are, yeah, are really, you a guy it, are you a guy that likes high scores for your us opens are you a a man who likes to protect old man par or, or do you not care that could well because that's something that um i mean la country club kind of got some heat for uh, yeah last us open listen I'm, I'm, like, not, I'm not i'm not you know i, like I, know country you're from LA. Just... I know you're from la i'm not trying no. to dog <laughs> on la i'm not allowed to join there so <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. i'm in the entertainment industry they don't let uh lowly actors join there i played there uh lacc is nowhere near as difficult as pinehurst like lacc is a pretty wide open track like and also you're in la there's there's limited real estate for pushing tees back so like that was always going to get destroyed um pinehurst is going to, it's much like ricky fowler is not shooting eight under on day one of pinehurst like it's just not going to happen well, um, he's only one of he's one of only four players who have ever shot 72 holes under par at pinehurst yeah i'm just stats, like uh, interesting yeah, that you wow. mentioned ricky fowler because <laughs> Well, he was the one who went eight under at LACC last year on the first day. Yep. Like, yeah. Broke the, the record. So I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, yeah, it's 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 much more difficult in terms of, yes, I am a tr golf traditionalist. And I do like that, how every major has its thing, right? Like the Masters has its tradition. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's old school tradition. You know, the Open has you know, old old Tom Morris and the, you know, the, uh, antiquity of it all. Right. And then also playing in crazy wind link style right. and like the true artistry of it all. And then the U S opens, like, we're just going to fuck you over because of <laughs> rough and green speed. <laughs> and what's interesting though, is that they don't have rough. Like that's mm -hmm. a big thing of U S opens is like growing the rough, you know, up to your knees. And that doesn't exist there. So it really is going to be, we have to protect the course vis-a-vis -vis our greens. And right. 
I was, you know, I'm, I'm making my picks and I'm like, I'm just going to pick guys who are wizards with the short sticks, you know, because I think that's and a clean gonna... criminal record, too. We can't have, <laughs> you know, like the Scotties of the world. <laughs> what will golf Twitter do on Monday and Tuesday without being able to post videos of them dropping a ball into the rough to show us how right. deep I know it's like, well, it's just going to be videos of people dropping balls on the greens and then watching them roll 40 yards down probably. into, into yeah. the waste area. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, uh, and I was trying to think of like what I, uh, what I think the score will be. I like, I don't think it's, I don't think anyone's going to, be above 10 under, you know, like, I don't think that Agreed. like, yeah. but, but like, they're just so much better now. Like even the last time they played there, I think that golf has gotten so much diff different. Like, mm -hmm. What was, well, Valhalla was, it, was supposed to be like a challenge and, and so difficult. And that's what everybody said yeah. for a year leading into Valhalla. And then it was not. And yeah. I mean, as we clearly saw, the biggest challenge was getting Scotty Scheffler out of jail. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I think I think Pinehurst of all may the guys actually to... be the most difficult one we see. This. Yeah, I would love it. Like I, I think um, when Payne won, he was like one of only a couple people under par, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I can't remember. I think he was two under, and and maybe Phil was one under. I don't. It was something like that, and I love that. Like when. Uh, like and then the, the next time that it, someone was under par was in 2014 when it was um, Ricky and who won that year? Keimer and there's one other guy mm -hmm. with them. But then yeah. that's the last time that like anyone has been under par at, at Pinehurst. Yeah. I still think it'll be under par. I just think they're much better than they were back then. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong. But the course is... I, I like seriously highly recommend it. And, and it's funny because we just did Band and Dunes and uh, we were like, okay, now that we've done, this is like the first like really adult, like kind of expensive golf trip that I've taken. Like we do, I do like my college golf buddies trip every year, but this one was like, we're going to Band and Dunes. And I was like, we need to do this every year. Like I want to do. And so I think the next one we're going to do is, is Pinehurst because it was, and I only got to play two, which like, if you're going to play any of the 10 courses, that's the one I guess you want to play. Um, right. but like golf heaven, if you're into golf, like that place is, I hate to say it, I, it, it was better than band and dunes. The band and dunes, the views are much better, but like just overall everything Pinehurst kills. Now, is there having never been to Augusta? I know both of you have. There's the subtle things that people who have been there would know, but the viewers at home would not possibly know. Like at Augusta, it's the elevation changes. Yeah. Mm. Is there anything like that at Pinehurst that unless you go there and actually walk the grounds, you won't be able to, to see at home? I've heard stories about the squirrels. Oh, yeah. The oh. fox squirrels. Fox squirrels? Yeah. Look it up. Uh, I have a... <laughs> I have a Google it. I have a video of one. They like they're weird looking. Uh, I, I, got I think that's what they're called, fox squirrels. Yeah, they're not like um, they're not. They don't look like a a normal squirrel. They look like oh a, god, look at this thing. Hold on. Yeah, Let's bring it up. It's like <laughs> I didn't yeah. Even know here's this was one. A thing. <laughs> yeah, they look almost like um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like they're it's just like, big, like kind of like a yeah, lemur, kind of like a. Um... It is like a lemur. It's so weird. Oh, yeah, they're on. they're big too. Yeah, the the fox. I think they're called fox squirrels. It was something like that. Um, they were cool. The, the you know it's interesting. Like Augusta, it's so funny because it did remind me a lot of Augusta, even though it was like completely different. But Augusta is super undulating, and like the elevation changes are crazy. Whereas Pinehurst is flat, man. It is. It's an easy walk. Um, okay. Well, it better be if it's that distance. I mean, great. no kidding. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> but it is super narrow, man. Like on the tee boxes, uh, 
you are hitting through shoots. It does open up similar to Augusta where you're like, you're like, how can you hit through this thing? But then it does open up really wide for you. But like um, what you're seeing from off the tee is really, really intimidating. Um, and plus you've got these intimidating things for the people on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. This is about, there's, there's the Fox squirrel. Yeah. It's a yeah, crazy looking animal. I never yeah, knew. Well, um, and the other, I think the other thing is that, uh, is that the driving range is the cradle. I guess they're making the par three course, the driving range, yeah, which is wild. a travesty, but also going to be the dopest driving range in the history <laughs> of driving ranges. Like there's so many cool greens out there to hit at, like uh, how very cool and interesting and stuff. So uh, yeah, I would love to like go just post up at that bar at the cradle and just watch people smack balls. I think that, that would be really, really cool. Now, we also talked about just the comparison back and forth between Pinehurst and Augusta. And, you know, Augusta is famous for their azaleas and amongst their other plants. And um, I know Pinehurst has, I think, I think they said there's like 75 different varieties of plants along the fairway and around the course. Is it like obvious that there's different type of plants or do they all kind of look the same is it like does it look like you're in a you know kind of what's the what's the vibe with the, the plant life there i'm gonna be honest with you uh oh, i got pretty drunk and <laughs> so, so they're all the same <laughs> i <laughs> i mean it was like pine trees and then like those bushes that are in the sand area and then the grass like that's all i <laughs> said uh, perfect yeah i think bar stools like sponsored by like um what are those terrible cinnamon shots? Uh, fireball? fireball, fireball, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of fireball shots. Um, so I wasn't like really looking at like you know the flora and the fauna, but I yeah. believe that's a thing. <laughs> well, okay, I I want to read off some of that because I have a list of the names of some of these. Um, okay, and I want to. She's our off. she's our researcher, Wells. I know. She's got all of it. I mean, I pull, I you know I try, I try. <laughs> What um, you should have done is you should have made a list of fake ones too and see if we could guess which are ooh. real and which are fake. Oh, that's, yeah, that's pretty good. No, yeah. okay. Here's what I'm going to do, actually. I want to read the list of one and then I want I want you to come up with like what how what cocktail you would make oh, okay. for this. Because for this, um, some of these kind of sound like a cocktail. Okay. Um, uh, there's, I don't, I don't know what any of these plants look like, by the way, either. <laughs> okay. So that's not really <laughs> helpful. I didn't do that much research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, the black eyed Susan. Oh, oh domestic <laughs> violence right off yeah, right. the bat. <laughs> These are in alphabetical order. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm starting like, at the top of the list. Jack Daniels neat, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Natty light. I don't know. <laughs> Natty light. That's perfect. <laughs> oh, man. The Carolina wiregrass. Carolina wiregrass. Uh, mm. Man, that sounds like like a, something like a mint julep, you know? Carolina mm. wiregrass. I want that Carolina wiregrass. Yeah. Let's turn like Theo Vaughn somehow. Chinese nice. forget me not. That's got Jaeger in it. Yeah. Or, or um, sake. That's Japanese. Mm. Oh, oh, that's yeah. that. <laughs> Cut We're that. A great start. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Sapporo. That's Chinese, I think. Uh, a false fox glove. False fox glove. Well, that that would have to be a um, like a mocktail, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because the false yeah false, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, a henbit nettle. Oh, uh, so like henbit nettle. That's got to be a gin drink. Anytime I hear nettles, I think of pine needles, and gin mm. just reminds me of pine needles. Yep. Uh, there's also something called a four o'clocks four o'clocks yes four o'clocks hmm. it's like, 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 like margarita like I was about it's, to say, it's a water down somewhere margarita yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or not a strong margarita it's not quite yeah. five o'clock yet uh a rough button weed wow these are the great plants have the weirdest names that sounds like a sexual move <laughs> A rough button weed. Baby, get ready. You're about to get a rough button weave. 
<laughs> this is the last episode of the Golf and Filter podcast. I think. Yeah. <laughs> We're about to get a stiff aster. <laughs> wow. Is that one a stiff yeah. aster? Yeah. That's what she responds with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a, a woolly croton. Maybe it's wow. I don't crouton? think it's crouton. Maybe it's mm. croton. There's someone out there who's like a a master gardener mm. who's like eyes I, twitching right now, listening yeah, to me right. read these. But it's it's also similar like to like bird names where you have like uh, a big titted warbler and you're like, who came mm -hmm. up with this name? But then there no. then there will also be another one that's just like, no, that's a red bird. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's what it's called. It's just a red bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if those birds know their names and they're like, we got fucked, man. You know, yeah. like, we, we don't you get, get to be a, <laughs> you get cool? to be a red breasted warbler <laughs> and I'm yellow bird. Yeah. <coughs> like, Oh, this poor plant is probably like, Oh, you get to be a stiff aster and I'm just a pine <laughs> weed. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's too many. There's too many on this list. Yeah, I think we did it. We did. We did the yeah. The yeah. Plants thing. yeah. Um, okay. Um, it, do you have any picks? Do you have any picks? I mean, you've seen the course. You've played the course. Um, yeah, like I said, I do think that uh, short game is going to be key. Like, I, I, you know who I think... I mean, obviously, like you can't say... You can't not say Scotty, right? Like, right. I mean, yeah. Like, he's probably going to... Yeah. He's like, he's also just like on a different level, but like eventually that's got to come down. I would assume, I, but yeah, I think he's probably going to win this. Um, but like, uh, if Scotty gets incarcerated again, God yeah, it's the, it's the <laughs> only way <laughs> has too many stiff asters and he can't. Play. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jail's tough, man. <laughs> um, What's his name? Uh, Cam uh, Smith, I think, is a good a good pick. He's he's got such great hands, and I think that putting is going to be key. I don't even know how he's doing on live, but like one, he seems like a big game kid. Like mm -hmm. maybe that's because I only see him in big games now. But like he was always good at the Masters. He obviously won um, at uh, the old course. I mm -hmm. could see him like, and also like the, his big his his bugaboo is he's kind of wayward off the tee and this is a place mm -hmm. similar to augusta where i think you can kind of be a little wayward off the tee i also saw some stat that it was uh the most hit fairway in um like the pga like it was like uh 70 percent which is like the other us opens were like down at 60 so <clears throat> that doesn't mean people are hitting the ball better there that just means that they have wider fairways so i think that um cam smith would be like that's maybe my sleeper pick Obviously, I think that Morikawa is trending the right way. He's on um, my list too. Yeah, he's yep. he's been top two in the past. Um, he's been final pairing in the last two majors. So, and yeah. he gets this one, then uh, he's one away from from a slam. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd like to see Rory do well. I don't know if that'll happen. Um, maybe. Um, and then like uh me and my wife were doing the picks earlier and she had a good one that I liked a lot, which was Jason day. Mm, I think he's I trending and he's trending in the right direction. Mile bonds finally figured out how to dress him correctly. And that's starting to look really good. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, he's got, I think some of the best hands in the business. Um, like he's a, an amazing bunker player and it's just a lot of sand there anyways. So yeah, I'd like the Aussie to, to pull it out. But it's gonna be Scotty Scheffler, let's be realistic. <laughs> yeah. How do we um how do we think that the the fact that Pinehurst is flat will impact Tiger? Like you know, because the, the, the big talk with him playing Augusta is oh the hills, the hills, yeah, and, and his feet and his back, and you know, but with Pinehurst being flat, benefiting him, but it is also a lot of sand for him to have to hit off. So yeah, I mean, I think people are just like trying to be optimistic about Tiger, right? Yeah. Like they they're like, oh, this is going to be great. It's going to be warm. That'll be good for his back, and it's it's flat. This will be good for his leg. And and everyone that's seen him hit balls, I, I saw like Morikawa was like, he's still got every shot in the in in the bag and everything. And so I think we're just like hoping for him to perform well. But I don't think, and I don't think, I don't think it it could be. A, of the flattest walk in the world. It could be short, it could be hot. And I don't think it would change the fact that like, he's just not 
to me, he's just not tournament ready anymore. Yeah. And unless he says, okay, I'm going to play a bunch of smaller tournaments to get ready. I don't think he's ever, he's, I just don't think you can win a major without like getting super tournament ready. Yeah. You know, like at this point, when I think about like getting excited to watch tiger or think about like, Oh, how is this course going to fare for him? I'm, I'm thinking about it in terms of like, will he make the cut? You know, I'm, I'm, I don't think about it in terms of, do I think he can win anymore, which is sad, but I think realistic, you know? Yeah. I, I have to be honest too. Like, and I'm, maybe I'm going to get hate for this, but I'm getting a little frustrated with the WDs. Like, yeah, it, it stop withdrawing from golf tournaments. Like, I get it. There is a little bit of like, obviously, his health is, you know, when he withdrew from Genesis for like being sick, it was like, what was that? Mm-hmm. Is that true? Or like, were you didn't like, weren't playing well and you didn't want to continue on? Like, I don't know. I'm getting a little tired of that. And, and it's like every time I feel like he tees it up, I'm like, we're all just kind of waiting for him to withdraw a little bit which is just frustrating to me like if you're gonna if you're gonna crash and burn do it like i did in dallas and (laughs) snap hook a million balls out of bounds (laughs) you can't quit tiger um i wanted to do well but i just don't i think that like i just think the game's past him and i think that uh the thing that you're he's gonna need the most at Pinehurst is going to be putting and that only comes from like a bunch of competitive rounds. Like it's going to yep, be a yep. lot of lag putts and stuff. He's just not the guy that like that was one know, thing that, he that... struggled with so bad in Augusta. He had yeah. so many easy putts that he just like he looked like Jordan Spieth out there putting yeah. which isn't good. I know. Remember when Jordan Spieth though like couldn't miss? I do. <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah. What happened to that? You know, he was the last person to win the Masters in the U.S. Open in the same year. Yeah. At, at Chambers Bay. Well, Scotty's going to do it again. So. Yep. Now <laughs> this year it's going to be Scotty. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I want him to do well. I think it'd be cool if Phil did well. I don't think it's going to happen either. You know, like. So. Uh, I do want to say though, like, so obviously Payne Stewart's win at. Um, Pinehurst is like super iconic and like him beating Phil and like, you're going to be a dad. Like that whole thing is beautiful. Uh, I loved Phil. I mean, I loved Payne Stewart growing up. Like he was one of my favorites um, and playing in the LPGA uh, tournament of champions. I do every year. Um, it's run by uh, Payne's son, Aaron Stewart, who one is a stick. He like played in college too, like really good golfer, but is I never met Payne Stewart, obviously, but um, if he was half as like awesome as his son is, then it told me the lore of Payne Stewart being like the the best guy in the world totally makes sense because Aaron is mm-hmm. freaking awesome, um, really good guy to be around. So, and I I know he'll be like kind of like <clears throat> pulled out and like you know braided around. I'm sure at Pinehurst this year, but like uh, green flags, like that guy rocks. Hmm. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. I, it's the this is the 25th anniversary year this year for for his win. So um, I, there were some people even saying like, you know, having Bryson as a pick because channeling the 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 hat and yeah, but he doesn't wear that hat anymore. Thank God. Does he? I, think, I, I honestly, I we've had this conversation before. I think to where I've said I, the hat, him not wearing the hat, I think makes him like. 30% more likable now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, I he tell you what, though. What? He, he's had a complete glow up, though. Like, yeah. I feel like everyone hated him, and now everyone loves him. Or he's still It's a big 360, like, 180 yeah. on this whole thing. Yeah. Am I the only one, though, that thinks this bulge and roll thing with his irons is kind of BS? <laughs> Listen, like, man. You and I (laughs) on the same page, same page, you and I, I mean, we won't get into it, but Nikki, no, Nikki's laughing because we have a group chat and I got into it a little bit, but yeah, Yeah. yeah, I don't, it seems like it's cheating a little bit, a little bit and it doesn't make sense. But anyway, yeah. I mean, I understand like the idea behind it. Like if, if you hit the ball in the toe, then it, it effectively will push it out further. Right which means that it'll be a straighter ball. And then the same thing with the heel. Sure. 
But I think that that's cheating. I think that you have to play flat irons like everybody else does. And he I don't does. know if he got approved. Like, I don't either. Especially yeah, it was like mm. the Monday before Augusta. Like, I don't know. It was very. I'm, uh, I'm getting angry. <laughs> I, know. I know. But then watch like, you know, Kirkland's going to make a set and we're all going to try right, and be like, right. I will. Damn, so good. to his to his credit, though, um, the 3D printing thing. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be more of a thing for, for, for sure. now on. I mean, yeah, sure. that's that's pretty wild, actually, that they're able to do that type of stuff, which means they're able to do things with raw material that they were never able to do in the past. So, yeah, maybe there is something to it. I don't know. He's the scientist, isn't he? <laughs> you know, I think that. I don't think he's as smart as everyone thinks he is. That's my theory. <laughs> I think that. Well, you're, you're my new best friend. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've also heard he went, you know, he went to uh, SMU and like I knew people who like, and they were like, he was not like a (laughs) physics major, you know, like, (laughs) uh, but yeah, yeah. anyways, he's fine. What's that? Where's he getting his info from? I I think he is a golf nerd, but like this whole moniker of like that, he's like the wizard of golf i don't know if i if i believe like the no. doc Brown honestly i always thought i always thought matthew fitzpatrick was more of like the mm-hmm. like yes num- numbersy nerd than he, bryson you know, was like he m- is a good pick too my wife picked him as well uh that cross-handed weird crap he does yeah probably will work really well. well there you know mm-hmm. uh yeah can I talk to you guys uh, about Band and Dunes real quick, though? Because yeah, sure. like, I don't know if anyone's going to ever have me on a golf podcast, and I want to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> yes, please, mm-hmm. please. Okay. Tell us all about it. Make us jealous. Make everyone else jealous. <laughs> everyone needs to go to Band and Dunes. But I'm going to tell you a couple things that, like, I don't think people know this. And I, maybe I shouldn't say this, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, if you if you go, if you call Band and Dunes up and you'd be like, I want to come, you, you know, get a group in six months. They'll be like, we are booked out. No, we are booked out until like J- July of 2026. And you're like, what? Okay. Uh, here's the secret that people don't know. You don't have to stay at Bandon Dunes. You can stay. You can get an Airbnb anywhere. You can go stay in uh, Old Bandon. That's where we stayed. And then just drive in. And you can go to, you know, one of the one of the pro shops and say, Hey, do you have any times tomorrow? And they'll be like, Yeah, we've got uh, a twosome available at Sheep's Ranch. We've got one available over at Pacific Dunes. And so you can fit in. Now, you might not be able to play with all your buddies, but if you ever want to go play Band and Dudes, you totally can. And you don't have to wait like three years for like that to happen. Hmm. Uh, so that would be my hack. Like, if I'd ever do it again, I don't know if I would stay at Band and Dunes. I think I, I would probably stay off premises. Um, and I would just go and be like, what do you guys got today? I'll, you got old McDonald this afternoon. And then if you don't, then you're like, well, can I go to play shorties? Can I go play in the plantation? Sure. You know, like, so that's like the one hack, I think. Um, it's like the single rider line hack at Disney. Yeah, exactly. Um, I want to rank my favorite courses. I did now. I didn't now take this in consideration. I didn't play old McDonald, but everyone kind of said that like that's the kind of one you can miss. Uh, Bandon, Bandon Dunes and Pacific Dunes for views and just golf ability is mm. Chef's Kiss. Um, play in the, if you can try to play in the morning because it gets really really windy in the afternoon and then you're just playing a completely different style of golf uh sheep's ranch you should play in the afternoon because it is so windy and it's ridiculous and it's <laughs> like we were we, i played i played lights out there 50 mile an hour winds i was hitting i can hit my seven iron like 175 right i was hitting i'd be like 120 in and my caddy was like it's a full seven here like legitimately and then it was like really fun you're just like he's like hit that little punch six iron real low to the ground run that shit like it's you be mm-hmm. you start playing this old school of golf which is really really fun um i hated abandoned trails with a passion now did i Ooh. get too drunk yes is that why i played <laughs> bad probably but also it goes it takes you into the mountains and i didn't fly all the way here to go play you know woods golf i want to see the ocean 
I want to see, you know, uh, islands off the coast. And, you know, so I hated it. Now, I'm totally in the minority there because everyone I played with my, in my group, they loved that course the most. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> interesting. But uh, I hated it. It's really, really narrow, too. You're a, view, you're a views guy. You want the views. Yeah. And the and views the and the booze. And that's you another thing. You got to be. They are kind of sticklers at the, the the little shops there getting drinks. It's not like Mexico where they're just like you can get as drunk as you want to be. They'll they like kind of limit you, which mm. you know I like to get a little drunk on the golf course. So that <laughs> that that offended me a little bit. Um, <laughs> but anyways, it is super cool. I I will try to go back every single year. I think everyone should go do it. And uh, yeah, just get used to like playing in the wind it's so much fun to have to learn how to play golf in the wind and this old link style like just like hitting stingers and low balls and trying to run things up is amazing drawbacks of bandon and they even let us know about this um like they sent an email being like hey the greens aren't where we want them to be they had like the rainiest mm -hmm. season ever and so there was a lot of greens that was just like demolished so much so that we had to be like it's an auto two putt guys like this oh, is oh really that bad this mm. is a little this is a little crazy and that was something that i did like you know after you're done with with your trip they like do the survey and i was like i think that you should probably take some off the bill for like it, there was a couple holes that were just like unplayable or greens that were just unplayable so keep that in mind um the other thing that i wish someone told me it was really really frustrating um so at Pebble, where you golf courses that you have to take a caddy, like at Pebble, they have a little sign when you're when you're uh, paying for your tea time. This is how much a caddy normally gets. This is what is expected for a, a tip on that. It's very cut and dry. Okay, it's one hundred fifty dollars. I I don't care what it is. I just want to know. I don't want to mm -hmm. piss anybody off. I don't want to do anything wrong. You know. Uh, Bandit didn't do that. It, it was like, well, it's like a hundred bucks. And then like, you know, like maybe 20%, like maybe like, maybe like 120, but you know, so whatever. And it was so confusing. And like a lot of the caddies were like, what did they tell you? That's not what we normally get. Mm. Like, and it was just frustrating. It was like, I don't care what the money is. I just want to know what it is because I'm not trying to right. piss anybody off. So that would be my, my one critique of like Bandit, just put a sign that says like, this is what it is. If you want to go over that, wonderful but like this is what a good tip would be that was really that kind of thing gives me so much anxiety yeah like yeah i would i wouldn't even be able to play golf very well the whole day knowing that like i don't knowing that at the end of the day i would have to give this person money and i don't know how much money i would have to give them yeah that would give me anxiety the whole time yeah it was it was a that was a little annoying um and then uh I, when you go there, try to play everything, and then they have this putting. I think it's at I think it's at Pacific Dunes. It's like a crazy putting facility, right? Like it's like a putt putt course, and uh, I think it's nineteen holes. Highly recommend. Like maybe like the day you leave, make sure you don't leave so early. Go there, get a couple cocktails, and have a putting competition. Like it mm. was, it was like one of the more like the whole thing was amazing. Like shorties, the part three thing that was like so much fun. And everything was just so amazing, and that was like something that we just like kind of threw in at the end. And we had the most fun. We had Bloody Marys. You know, we were playing for you know a bunch of money, and highly recommend doing that. That was really really cool. A great way to end the trip. But anyways, Band and Dunes is so sick. Really, really want to go back, um, but I want to go to Pinehurst more. There you go. Well, you you've mentioned before about like the the view at Pine. I mean, the view at Pebble being like you know unbeatable because it has the ocean. You know, Bandon's got the ocean view, so I'm putting you on the spot because Pebble's like your home. Yeah, the Pebble ocean view or the Bandon ocean view. Like if you had to pick one. <laughs> Oh, Peb Pebble destroys Bandit, but it's so different though. Uh, it's 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 kind of like Tory Pines in the way that like it is an ocean view, but you're really really high above the ocean at Bandit. Mm. You know, it's like it's yeah. probably like a like a three. Boo! Sorry, my dogs. 
Um, it's, it's probably like a like a 400 foot drop down to the beach. Mm, um, okay. And it's not as like dramatic. Whereas Pebble is like you're on the water. Like you get you when you when you think of like 18, it's like the waves crash onto the fairway, right? It's not mm -hmm. like that at Bandon. <clears throat> so it's much more like prevalent. Like on eight at Pebble, you, you're like look, you know, where, where Speed mm -hmm. did that crazy shot. Like you look looking down of like it's like mm -hmm. 50 feet down. Like I can see the otters. Whereas at Bandon, it's kind of further away. Um, but it is insanely beautiful we had one day where a, this bald eagle started like flying with us and my buddy oh. dean uh my buddy dean was was hitting and he like flew right in front of dean and he was like going into the wind so he's kind of just like floating there and i was like dean please do not kill this <laughs> i thought for sure he was gonna National murder bird. <laughs> yeah. can you let her out i think she has to go pee um yeah so anyway so yeah, it was it was uh it was beautiful oh my gosh i can't even imagine like the headlines oh, oh yeah yeah like bachelor <laughs> at douchebag dean unklerd <laughs> kills, kills bald eagle <laughs> all for a golfing outing you right know, what a selfish oh, asshole uh yeah oh goodness well thank you again for for joining us and um, giving us a preview of what's to come um, this weekend at the U S open. Um, and uh, I don't know, we'll see if our picks are right. I, I don't, it doesn't matter who we pick. Scotty's going to win. No, it won't um, matter. Yeah, exactly. It, there's no you guys point. all think it's going to be Scotty. And then I, pretty much, I mean, Bryson might, I think just from uh, his performance at the PGA catching up to yeah. Xander, but uh yeah, Scotty's. I mean, we're we're in Tiger performance territory right now. It's hard to bet against him. Yeah, yeah. It's also I wonder what it's doing to the psyche of everyone else around him too. Exactly. Yeah, because that was a big thing with Tiger, right? Like yeah. it was the intimidation factor, not even like the play. People would just hear the roars and be like, "Frick, yeah, I can't yep. beat him." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if that, yeah. that's what what a interesting rarefied air to be in where it's just like just showing up you're scaring people you know right that's fun. well i think it, i think it was colin who even said before the pga before the final round of the pga like yeah you know i know everybody's the storyline everybody's rooting for but like you know it'd be nice if i like if someone would root for me you know but it was like it's not that no one's it's not that people are rooting against you and it's not that people aren't rooting for you i'm sure people would be thrilled for you to win it's just this dude can't stop winning. And like, he was, right. he was also just in jail and like it, I don't know. It was just, yeah. Do you guys buy into the good guy act or do you think there's like, is, is he that mm. saccharine sweet or do you think that like, I think so simply because he <laughs> made the comment in both Augusta and I think at the PGA. And that may be why he was going early to the clubhouse in Valhalla because he made the comment about like how he didn't know how to make his own eggs when yeah, Meredith yeah. wasn't there. Like he didn't know how to make his own breakfast because his yeah. wife wasn't there. So he had to go to the clubhouse and he was like, and he, that's he, before he even thanked Ted Scott, he thanked the people who made him eggs because his wife wasn't there. And I was like, I'm sorry, you don't know how to make your own breakfast yeah. at your Airbnb. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do a little bit. You know, one one thing that really kind of grinded my gears with him a little bit uh, was him being like, the cops are so good. Like, th thank, yeah, thank right. you so much for, all, you know, the hard work that you do. It's a hard job. I, totally. I get that. But I, you're, I feel like you're pandering to me a little bit like you're, <laughs> you know, like I think that after you get arrested before a major that you could win yeah. three point five million dollars or whatever, you can be like. That cop was an idiot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. Like, and how are you gonna how are you gonna so arrest nice? me? <laughs> they gave me a sandwich and they asked I know. me like, they, do they want me to like make it special and stuff? I was like, excuse me, that means that they spit in your sandwich. Yeah, like, exactly. that doesn't right. that doesn't mean that they like took extra time making a sandwich for you. That means they spit in your sandwich. <laughs> yeah. I I if I'm <laughs> I don't, maybe I'm just petty, but if I was him, I'd be like, first of all, that guy's an idiot. Second of mm -hmm. all, 
I'm suing you guys for $3.5 million because there's a good argument to be made that I didn't win because you guys arrested me before the tournament. Mm -hmm. This is my police department. Way too many grudges. (laughs) Yeah. And then also my whole thing is I am the nice Christian guy and now I'm a felon. You've you've (laughs) ruined my my whole identity. That's another $10 million. Screw Mm -hmm. you guys. Right. Anyways, back to blue. <laughs> <laughs> You're so so grateful. <laughs> yeah, I mean they do have they do have a tough job, but like don't maybe like sure. also how do you not know that's Scotty Scheffler? That's my question. Like the biggest exactly golf tournament right. happening in your town, and you don't know. And he's also the biggest golf. Like it wasn't, you know, Taylor Gooch. You know, it was Scotty <laughs> <laughs> Scotty fucking Scheffler. And also the other cops, how are the other cops not like, Hey man, it's Scotty. We can't arrest. He has a tea time. Like he's leading. Like this is going to be bad for us. This is going to be terrible. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that's my closing thoughts on Scotty (laughs) Scheffler. If that had been like two weeks before when it was the Kentucky Derby, if it had been like Seabiscuit, would they have arrested him? (laughs) Like the horse? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Probably not. Yeah. Probably just That's let a great go. point. The privilege of a horse, you yeah. know? Yeah. Horse privilege. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All those oldest time. Thank you the for show, coming on, Wells. The show's going to get canceled. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to go make myself a black-eyed Dorothy. <laughs> that, wow. <laughs> Susan. <laughs> Damn it. I was close. And a, and a stiff aster. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Save that for my wife tonight. All right, guys. Yeah, thank wow. you so much for um, thank you for letting me be on the show. It's always fun. Yeah, thank you.